Today we're diving in talking about the new Sony ZV-E10. Do you have one? Do you plan to get one? Do you like it? Are you thinking about it? And all of the whatnots on the in-between. I'm super honored and just plum pleased and my pleasure to be here as your host for this week. Luria is over at Vid Summit, capturing all of the amazing footage and content to bring back to you all over here on the live streaming pros community, as well as the Ecamm live community. Let us know where you are chiming in from this week. We're talking about my one month review, my honest review a month later, having after having to use the ZV E10. Are you guys ready? Let's dive into it. All right. So first of all, let me know, are you getting the camera or do you already have the camera? All right. Let me know. Let's go over to uh, show some love to those that are over in the chat. Uh, let's see here, David <laughs> saying who's dancing. No one out here in these particular streets. Uh, however, <laughs> I'm always still happy to bring a, a, a jubilant vibe, if you will. All righty. We've got Sammy in the house. Good to see you. We've got David Hunt in the building. Let's see here. We have Mr. Camera Junkie in the building. Uh, be more super. Love it. The podcast. Good to see you. Glad that you are here. Uh, said <laughs> depriving us all of by not dancing. I, listen, we passing all those comments by, okay? Not even happening out here. <laughs> you can't lie. Even plotting. There's dancing. There's good dancing. There's bad dancing. And then there's whatever it is that I do that will never be seen. <laughs> it's not happening. Not happening. What's going on, Fulgens? Good to see you. Glad that you are here. Today, talking about that ZV1, we're going to be diving in in just a second after we say hello to some of the folks. We have Doc to the Rock, your Ecamm Live Community Manager over here. Saying I can just see. <laughs> no, it's not dancing. Like, this is cruel and unusual punishment. What is going on, Gloria? Good to see you. Glad that you are here. Uh, we also have Mike Quinn Studios in the building. Good to see you. Glad that you are here here if you guys have questions feel free to drop those as well in the chat for any uh thing that you have when you want to talk about the zve tent so let's go into some of the specifications for those of you that aren't aware there is a playlist available uh that Luria has done and going into the details when it comes specifically to the sony zve 10 i have my little uh, I, I don't want, I don't like calling it like a dead cat or whatever. Cause the one time somebody saw it in the family, she was like, Danny, you killed a cat. Which was my sister. Thanks for burning that in my memory. So we're just going to call it our fuzzy friend here. So, <laughs> so we have a shotgun microphone ready to go for vlogging for content creation. I believe that the Sony ZV-E10 is the best camera currently on the market. If you're just getting started in video, whether you are live streaming, which is a lot of what we do around here, or if you are recording video content so that you can produce that so that you can show up and share your message using video. I think when it comes to the specifications of the Sony ZV-E10, some people get confused often when it comes to the A6400, another one of my favorite cameras, the Sony A6600 Sportnet Sigma 16 millimeter lens on there because a lot of the Sony APS-C bodies tend to be a little similar. So you have that, and for those of you that aren't aware, let's pop off the glasses, if you will. This that you see right here on this, this, this box, this is what you call the sensor. Imagine it like the eyeball for your camera or like your eyeball, like on your face or whatever. That's what it is for the camera. That helps it to see, receive light that comes in when it comes to the lens, hashtag all of the things. And so that APS-C sensor, we've seen that at 4K, 30 frames per second, 1080p, 120 frames per second. So those of you that love Peter McKinnon, Matty Hapoya, a lot of other amazing creators out there, you get the opportunity to see them do all the super slow motion B-roll. Now you can do that with the Sony ZV-E10. All of that stuff is baked in. You also have what's called S and Q mode, slow and quick. So if you wanna do a time-lapse, you can do that very easily. Or again, if you wanna go quickly into a slow motion type of scenario or whatever, you can quickly access that in settings and it'll have it already baked in and ready for you in 
the camera, but we're not done yet. Wait, there's more. <laughs> so with the Sony ZV-E10, you also get a headphone port. So not only do you have the microphone port, which thankfully does not block the screen, no matter how you flip it, it doesn't block the screen. So I appreciate that because that can be a problem. So other cameras, you kind of flip it or you got to maneuver it, not on the ZV-E10 and you get a headphone port so you can listen. I don't know if you've ever made and batch recorded videos back to back and you are on and finally everything's ready and something's wrong with the audio. I apologize. You should have had a headphone port because that's what's happening in ZV-E10. You also get USB-C so you can charge your camera with a battery bank. And that also speaks to the power. You do get, you know, the FW50 battery. Um, I highly recommend you get yourself a USB portable charger so that you don't have to worry about that when it comes to the battery life and things like that. Ton of other things that's going on in this camera and including clean HDMI so you can get a look like this when it comes to live streaming. This is on the Sony a6400 and this image is very, very similar to what you're gonna get probably pretty spot on to the ZV-1. So what is it about this camera that makes it so good other than the specs? Cause we got that out the way. You probably already know that. You've probably been watching 48 different YouTube channels and all the videos around this camera if you're watching this live stream. So I think if you're looking at this camera, you have a video content strategy in mind. You're getting ready to produce content, maybe live streaming. Maybe you're going to do some recorded videos, maybe some TikToks. Okay. TikTok fam, where you at? Uh, Instagram reels or the like, you can turn this camera into vertical mode and the video will come out just like that and you're rip roaring ready to go on this camera um has active stabilization which is the digital stabilization in there uh, so that you can leverage that and one of my favorite features of the camera is just called sony catalyst browse which is a software that sony has allows you to stabilize the footage kind of like what you see the gopros doing where everything is kind of stable <laughs> but you have to do that uh, in software so that's just something for for you all to uh, note when it comes to that now let's be honest I, I think that's the whole point now you've gotten all the spiel out of the way let's let's think about this what's good what's bad about it what are what are some missteps did is everybody kind of just being a little too polite about this this camera right here are, are they tripping? Like, you know what I mean? So I just feel like when it comes to the Sony ZV-E10, a lot of what you hear is going to be the truth. And a lot of what you hear is, um, it's some things that are missing in the conversation. That's all I'm saying. So we got a quick question I want to dive into here before I get into some of my dislikes by Glenda's Creative Place. How is the quality for using the Sony ZV-E10 for just photos besides all the great stuff it does for video? That's a fantastic question because I literally do not cover one half of a camera when I'm talking about them. It literally is always for video. However, I took out the Sony ZV-E10 when I was going out to get some test footage and I did take photos. You are having a fantastic experience when it comes to photos because you have what's called that silent shooting. So uh, silent shooting, excuse me, enunciation. Uh, what happens is you have a setting in your camera to say make noise or do not make noise. Meaning if you are, so for me, when I would go to church and I'm working in the media department, I walk around, I have my floater camera and you walk around, you see somebody just having a fun time, especially this is great when you're doing like kids. And so we would go over in like the kids section or whatever. And I would be able to get sneaky shots of the kids playing, laughing, and those really, really good candid moments simply because they didn't hear me. They were, you know, minding their business. Whereas with other cameras, you can hear a noise and I'll show you all uh, what that sounds like. Let's go over here to this and hissing. Let's put a memory card in here because you need one in here to make the noise, which is what I want to do. All righty. So let's, here's what's possible when it comes to the photo side of things. And this is also in the ZV-E10. You're not missing the shot there because you also get eye autofocus in your camera. 
So I'm using a 6600 in this demonstration, but that's available on the ZVE 10. You absolutely can do that. All of the settings, all of that stuff is still available. I believe it's like something like 10 or so frames per second, which means it takes that many photos per second, similar to what you just heard on the a 6600. So you're getting a fantastic experience. Uh, autofocus is the fastest that Sony has made and honestly the fastest in the world. So you get eye autofocus in animals as well as for photos. I've experienced using this camera for photos. I'm not a photographer by any means, but it means that you don't miss the shot. I can tell you what that's like in real life because taking images of still things, it's one thing. Taking an image of a, a, a situation that really won't repeat that matters is important. My friend, she uh, struggled to have uh, her, her rainbow baby. And if you know that terminology, you know what that means. That baby finally came and has been just an absolute joy uh, in their family. So we're over at the house. We're having a great time. This baby has been frowning since she was born. <laughs> the baby has been in permanent mean mode. But grandma comes over and does all the things that grandmas do. I don't know if it's just a, because they smell like sunshine and rainbows, but grandma comes by and I'm sitting in a dining room. I take my camera and she starts bouncing the baby. Baby lights up. All of those about 10 frames per second, all of those photos, I catch every little micro adjustment of her jaws and the laughing. And I sent all of those to my friend and so that they could have those for their baby. So when it comes to the photos of photo capabilities of Sony ZV-E10, you got it. You absolutely got it. You're not missing anything uh, when it comes to that. So uh, let's dive into another quick question here before I get over into some of the things that I think maybe could be adjusted. You know, it ain't all glitters and gold over here. So Sammy asking, what's the favorite part of using the Sony ZV-E10? The weight. Now, as a fluffy person, I am not shamed of talking about weight <laughs> because this girl is not like my girthy girl over here. She's a little, you know, she, she, she gets a protein in, you know, my 6600, she, uh, lifts weights or something. I don't know what she do, does in the midnight hour, but I can tell you the ZVE 10 lean and mean ready to roll. And the difference in the weight makes you want to carry it. And so I love, love, love my A6600, but that better battery life, uh, the actual, you know, IBIS in the camera makes things a little bit frustrating because it's, it gets heavy. The ZVE 10 is not like that. So if you have the, any of the A6000 series camera, A6000, 6300, 6500, whatever, then you're used to the weight. You're, you're used to the weight of that. Now imagine having that flip out screen microphone, headphone port, digital stabilization, all the stuff that wasn't in any of those unlimited recording, clean HDMI out. It makes it, it makes it easy. It makes me want to carry it. Most of the time when I'm vlogging and I'm doing like videos. So have there being a creator series on my channel where I'm like showing you behind the scenes of what it's like to be a creator. Okay. When I'm vlogging, I don't like feel stressed to carry this around or throw it in my bag. So for me, honestly, the weight, because the weight is everything of do I want to carry this or do I not want to carry this? Is it like frustrating me and you know, stuff like that. So that, that's the biggest thing I would say is like my favorite thing uh, about the Sony ZV-E10. So let's get into some of the, uh, I believe like things that I would want to see improved on a version two. I don't think they would change the name to like a ZV-11 or ZV-12. <laughs> so I hope not. Cause now it's starting to sound like a linear equation in math class. And I think we all hated that. So Sorry to the math teachers in the chat, but <laughs> uh, let's talk about some of the things that maybe are not so great on here. A couple things when it comes to your camera settings and, and the things that you're doing on your camera. Uh, now, Luria walked through the live streaming settings when it comes to the what you're doing. Now, in the video, she walks you through the things that you need to get an image that's consistent every single time. What happens when you take that camera off of the tripod and you want to start vlogging and you're using the automatic ISO automatic ISO is to say, let the camera decide when it's bright or when it's dark. This is most helpful. Let's say we're at vid summit with Luria hanging out and we go from inside a coffee shop to outdoors and it's like incredible sunshine. And then we go. I was about to say into a tunnel, but I was about to say, why would we go into a tunnel? But let's say we're going into like a train station or something. That's, you know what I'm saying? Like that transition from bright to dark. All three of those scenarios require different lighting. 
unless you're very, very comfortable with the what you're doing for your uh, camera settings and all of that, most of the time you are. And even though I am, I still don't want to think about every little thing. So at that point, when you get inside the coffee shop, there's a, a setting in your camera that'll say A, like Apple, E as in Edward, L as in Larry. Sorry to all the military folks, I never remember what those letters are. So <laughs> it's like I, I'd always fail. It's like Alpha, Echo, Larry, maybe. I don't know. Maybe Larry's not the one. Whatever. Larry and I are having this conversation now, though. But AEL, automatic exposure lock. What that does is it tells the camera, be still. Don't move or change the lighting setup for me. I don't want things to, to move or whatever. The camera says, okay, I'll lock that in place. And it does. And it does a great job with that. So it's like it can still be an auto, but you can say just that lighting right there is cool. Don't change anything. Fine. The camera will do just that for you. However, when it comes to the white balance, so does it show that it's a night, a nice, you know, sunshiny day and it's like... I don't know, orange is kind of, kind of like what you like this hue in here. It's a nice, bright, sh sunshiny day. Well, that's when we would need what's called the automatic white balance lock to say, do the same thing. Like, oh, that white balance looks cool. So the colors and everything look normal. We look number, normal for our skin tones and all of that. And the camera doesn't have it. I don't know why they took that out of this camera. This has been one of my biggest gripes because it's something I absolutely love to use on my A6400. I don't get it. This camera has it. The ZV-1 doesn't have it either. Quiet is kept. But the ZV-E10 doesn't have that. And I think that's super messed up. I think this can be changed in a firmware update because it's not something that should be omitted. I think it is something that um, they should definitely change because I think that will be extremely helpful if you're new and just getting started when it comes to uh, live streaming and stuff like that. And again, just... Uh, E camp, thank you. Alpha, Echo, Lima. <laughs> I said Larry. Larry, the cable guy, and I would have a great chat on the military phone. Okay. Sorry. Uh, listen, A E L. <laughs> I need to learn that because I'd be like, mm, let's see, Alpha, uh, E cam, and Larry. That's right. A E L. That's what the thing stand would know. But yes, A E L in your camera, it's called auto exposure lock. Just like that. Thanks so much, Ecam. I appreciate that. What's going on, Love Audio? Good to see you. Glad that you are here. Um, let's see here. Let me go through. Send ZVE20, ZVE30. I hope they don't do that. Just do Mark 1, 2, and 3 uh, and stuff like that. That's what, what I would I think is everybody would appreciate uh, when it comes to that. So let's dive into some other questions. Let me know if you're using the Sony ZVE10, if you have this camera. Have you run into any challenges with your white balance or maybe your exposure or something like that? Because I think uh, that feature would be super handy. So, you know, that's a thing. What do you do in that case? Um, you can set the white balance, but I can tell you so many times, like when you get into an excited creativity mode, oh gosh, you forget. And then you look blue, like, I don't know, you're about to start singing a sad love song about how your favorite <laughs> favorite frog ran away or something. You know, it's just like, ugh, I'm sick of it. So, I mean, you can set it, you can leave it in auto. Um, it's like, it's, a, it's just an annoyance more than anything else. It's an annoyance where it could be a super helpful benefit. It more than anything is just annoying. All right, got another question in here from Sammy Superstar. What lens are you using with your Sony ZV-E10? I prefer to use my Sony 10 to 18 millimeter lens. This lens um, retails for about $800. You can get it for, I think maybe used for about $600. And so it is a fantastic uh, camera because a lot of people complain about the digital and active stabilization. One of the things that you can do is get a wider lens, getting a wider lens, even something like the Tamron 11 to 20 uh, millimeter, I believe that's an F2.8 lens. If all that sounds foreign to you, it's okay. It just means when you zoom in and out, the aperture won't change or you won't impact your brightness and stuff like that. So, so it's known as a constant aperture. You're learning a lot here today. So <laughs> uh, that's a 10 to 18, but getting a camera like this 
is way more helpful uh, when you get a wide angle lens so that in the instance that you need to add 4K 30, that has a little bit of a crop. And then let's say you're trying to handhold it because you want to record something uh, and somebody's, you know, standing outside, whatever, you got a little coffee, a little jittery, fine. You just want to even out those uh, little jitters that you otherwise would have. The camera's going to crop in a little bit more. It's the same thing that would happen in software if you are using something like Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 10. When the camera has to, uh, when the, the software has to stabilize that footage, it now needs to bring it in a little bit to show you what, what I'm talking about is like, if it had to deal with the crop, it would zoom in something like that. So now it's a little bit closer and you're like, ah, I don't like that. It's too close. It's too close. Right? Well, what happens is the camera is trying to stabilize the software is trying to stabilize so it needs to take off a little bit of the edges to make sure the more more of what's in the center is stabilized active stabilization i don't recommend that you use it when it comes to uh, vlogging and stuff like that it's just is not i don't think that feature is built for that because it impacts the image too negatively to really be handy or unless you're going into sport mode, like when you switch into your Crocs, then that's the thing. Uh, but like running in the airport, then I'll put it in active or whatever. So it's not nauseating or whatever, but standard is fine. But if you need to do any of that stuff and you are, you know, experiencing some crops when you're at 10 millimeters, those crops are not an issue anymore because you still have plenty in the frame. It's not just, head autofocus and face autofocus only. So, you know, I think that's, you know, something that's super helpful when you're talking about that. So, alrighty. Uh, on the Sony ZV-E10, can you turn the shutter sound off? Yes, that's what's called the silent mode. And so that's what I was saying. This camera, like you heard over here, all of that, you can turn that off in any of these Sony cameras. It's what's called the silent shooting. So the Sony ZV-E10 has that. So I like that a lot when it comes to the photo modes, just because it's super handy. It's super duper handy. So <laughs> you lost your frog, hundred <laughs> percent. It's an AEL always excited live. I love that. You know what, where's my, where's my little horn? Let's try not to blast everybody. I like that always excited live. I, I love it. What is going on construction cronies? <laughs> I love that name. Good to see you. Glad that you're here. Uh, so we should send Miss D <laughs> a PDF of the, the phonetic alphabet. No, I like what I come up with on the fly. That's better. Why would you not want to hear about alpha echo Lima? Why would you want to hear? That's not fun. What's fun is algebra. Okay. Economics and Larry, that sounds better, much better. Yeah, that's, that's how you tell. Yeah, that's what, that sounds so much better. So much better. Just hit record. Get to see you. Glad that you are here. Let's go ahead and answer another question that we have going on in the chat. Alrighty. So every time I close my ZVE 10, there is a clicking sound coming from the device. Is that normal? Yes. Anytime that you turn your camera off, your camera goes through a series of functions in the software, as well as when it comes to the sensor. So let's say, uh, like if I turned, like if turn, turn it on now, it goes through so many different things. You'll fear, feel, not fear, feel a little bit of a judder or something in the camera. All of this stuff is becoming awake. Now, when I turn this off, you may not be able to hear it. Okay. So you didn't hear anything that time, but most of the time that's your shutter blades, meaning when you're taking a photo, let's see here. It's hopefully that you can see this when you're taking a photo, see that. So what's happening there, the shutter blades that are kind of like blinds are coming down and it's capturing the data. When you're doing video, you don't hear that. It's so many different frames per second and stuff like that, but it's kind of similar to what's happening. Now, when you turn your camera off, sometimes you'll hear those shutter blades. And sometimes if you turn your camera off, you may see those shutter blades. It's not that it has a, a sensor protection. This camera doesn't have that. Otherwise this would be closed right now, but those are those shutter blades uh, that you're experiencing. So we can turn the camera off. Hear that shutter blades. Now you can see those actually closed. See it. Now it opened again. 
So it's just going through the motion of what should we be doing? What would, what settings were we last in? What needs to happen? Kind of like when you turn your car off and it's like, especially these new age cars, y'all living y'all best life out there. Things coming to pick you up at the corner and just like, oh, we're done eating. Please come and get us from the curb <laughs> out of the rain. It's doing different functions. So same thing when it comes to uh, your camera. All right, we got a question coming in from James. Let's see here. Let's see. Uh, okay, here we go. So what are, what key accessories one might consider for adding ZV tam camera for streaming and vlogging? Well, what stand am I using for the Shure mic? So the Shure mic, we'll go audio first and then video because the audio stuff is very easy. This is my Shure SM7B. On this, I am using the uh, Elgato uh, LP, so low profile arm that they recently came out with. I think it's freaking fantastic. Uh, I think it's freaking fantastic because if you have monitors or something up and then you need your arm to come underneath, as well as it can stretch past the width of my desk and stuff, it is fantastic. I absolutely love it. And you can move it up. So if you need it to stand, you don't need to do anything. You just move your arm up. And so now it still would be under my laptop and I could be in a standing format if I wanted to. Uh, it works fantastically. <laughs> fantastically is one of my favorite words, but it works amazingly. So to answer your other portion of your question, key accessories, you really, when you think about accessories, I will be, I would say, be very careful about the what you buy because it's so easy to just buy everything everybody recommends because everyone makes it sound like you need to get X, Y, and Z. Here's what I encourage you to do. You said you want to do live streaming and you said you wanted to do vlogging. Those are two very different scenarios and you will have some things that cross over. When you're purchasing equipment, you need to think about the system of things that you need or the system that you want to. So when I think about my live streaming setup, there's a system around. I can swap any one of my cameras at any given time because the camera can change, the system remains the same. At that point, when I'm thinking about my live streaming setup, we're always gonna do clean HDMI out. So we can have, and don't have to worry about the, the camera doing too much processing, even with the internal USB live streaming that it has, even with um, other stuff that's coming as far as like Ecamm is concerned. Uh, beta folks, you know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> uh, a beta, beta fam in the building. But that's what I would say. So I use the Elgato cam link. I also have, because of the lens that I use and the distance and so forth, I need some space. I need about four feet or so for me to get, use my 35 millimeter lens and have the camera a little ways away from me. That means I need an extension cord to go from the Elgato cam link to my, um, what is this? The CalDigit TS3, I believe it is. Well, I don't want anything. Every new piece of equipment that you add in your system needs to be strong and great by itself. Otherwise it becomes like a, a weak link in the chain. And all it takes is one weak link to mess your stream up. So at that point I invested in a USB 3.0 cable, one that's very, very good, sturdy, uh, fast data transfer and all of that. So nothing is lost from the capture card to the, the uh, cow digit. Now, I'm needing something that converts that into USB-C. So I want really, really good USB-C cables. I like these by these company and simply because they're braided, they're fast, um, they're long and they come in multiple sizes. It's like, uh, what is this called? J-S-A-U-X. So J-S aux, if you will, really nice braided, fast cables. I have these cables for everything about once a year, I just throw what I have out just about and get new ones because the last thing that you want is to get ready to do a stream and something is awry or something is slow or something gets choppy or whatever. Most of the time, your cables, even though they're not being moved around or whatever, they still get stressed at the tips and stuff, which is why I like these because they're reinforced rubber uh, at the end. So I invested that. I think about every little piece of the puzzle What's the best piece to get for that so that I don't have some kind of, you know, janky setup that's messing you up when it comes to uh, tripods for the one that just kind of sits uh, for the live streaming camera. That's my old, um, what is it? Amazon basics, 60 inch tripod. So I don't move with that pretty much. 
That's it. And of course, Ecamm Live. Beyond that, I'm not thinking about changing any of that stuff other than my 1080p uh, capture card. That was the older uh, Camlink one. We updated that so that it was the 4K one when the new ones came out. So it's just like replacing it with the next best thing or what's the latest thing that's great for that. And then that's what we'll use. Now, when it comes to vlogging, how or what do you plan to do? For me, that absolutely meant the 10 to 18 millimeter lens. Yes, it is an investment, but it's a worthy investment because this lens is sharp. It doesn't do a terrible job in, in low light because the sensor isn't crippled. And I want to think about my microphone. This looks like a Rode microphone, but it's not. Um, I like it because it's short. It doesn't come past. You see there, it doesn't come past the camera. The, some of those other ones, it looks like. I don't even know. It just looks horrible though. <laughs> it's too long. It's like over in the shot. It just, I don't, I don't know. I don't look like a bird falling out the sky. This one short. I personally use the mobile VXR 10. Uh, and that's what I use my Sandisk extreme pro, uh, memory cards or Sandisk extreme cards. Even I don't touch anything else when it comes to memory cards. That's also something for you all to take into consideration when you're thinking about your uh, camera, this is a video I'm planning on doing, should be coming out today. But when it comes to the memory card, you need to use something that is over 64 gigabytes on the card. I put one in here. Yeah, this one is well used. <laughs> so let's zoom in here for personal effect. How you doing? Merry Christmas. We're awfully close, aren't we, huh? This here, send this card, as you can see, well used, written on all of that, been through battles with me. All right. So when we're talking about that, this card, Sandisk Extreme, Sandisk Extreme Pro, whatever it is that you want to use, it needs to be more than 64 gigabytes. What happens if it is not? Well, if it's not 64 uh, or if it's 64 gigabytes or less, that card is what's called SD. HC or the SD for high capacity. Yeah, it's high capacity, but it's not what you need in the ZBE 10 because that's going to break your video files up so that it's a, it's a problem. So for example, so those of you, I love to do my research. Um, I actually, again, had this for a future video, but let's go ahead and share this here. When we go over here to the Sony website, if you take a look at the fine print, when an S SDHC memory card is used. The max you're going to get is four gigabyte files. I don't know if you plan to do any kind of content over an hour or even 30 minutes or something, but I don't like limitations. And so that means you need a card that's an SDX as an X-ray C and Charlie for all you military folks. Okay. That means those files now are not stuck at four gigabytes. You're able to go ahead and uh, record for as long as you want to. Uh, so if you're doing a talk, like I'm doing a talk, people video, I'm gonna be out there, got the Ecamm Live Meetup. Okay, well, when I record my talk and I'm doing it with the ZVE 10, I don't want any issues. I don't need it broken up into four gigabyte files because now I got a bunch of little files to contend with versus one long one. So I use the SanDisk Extreme Pro as well as the extreme cards. Uh, that's my go-to when it comes to uh, the what I use and stuff like that. There's just, there's no other way, unless you're gonna use like a Sony Tough card or, or something like that. Um, that. That's what I'm saying. So let's see here. Yeah, so this is the, the, the cable brand that I've mentioned here. That's also good because these cables transfer data as well as charge. So my little battery bank that I like using is one that can, attached to my tripod. So if I need to recharge the batteries, or like I was saying earlier in the stream, you get you a little USB recharger. I'm not doing that. The people that carry four or five batteries because the battery life will get you, I don't know, it's not a ton, but let's see here. So if we take a look. These are, these are the battery life test the, the bat and based on my testing, this is what you can expect for, uh, the battery life on the Sony ZV-E10. So about 25 minutes, you are still at 85%. When you are at, you know, looking at that a 6600 I talked about, you're at 92%. Okay. Now let's go to one hour, 60 minutes. 
This is very easy to do because when you honestly think about it, you may be doing a talk or you may be recording somebody or whatever the case, right? So when you think about this one hour later, you're at 54%. You're at 54%. Uh, percent. So, you know, you're, you're good there at that point. But if you are using some third party random brand battery, then that sucks. You, you, you stuck. You're stuck. Now take that to 4K, as you see over in the right hand of the screen, take that to 4K, 24 frames per second. You're at one hour when you are at 25%. So you're already kind of taking a hit there, but, but you know, like really, really think about that uh, when you're coming up with the, the, the stuff that you want. I don't buy third, third party options. I just get Sony branded ones. I don't mind as far as the, I used to like the K star USB or whatever, cause it fits in my bag, takes up no space. And by the time I'm using one battery, the other one's good to go. So I keep my stuff lean and mean. shout out to switch pot, use a switch pot for all your vlogging needs. I personally use the Manfrotto Pixie when I just need to on the go because it's small. Uh, either of these are great. Sure, sure has the uh, MV, what is it, MV88 Plus. And so that includes like the Manfrotto Pixie and all that. So it depends on what you want or use or need. This is great because it gives you that extension. All that good stuff is sturdy. So when you set it down, you're good to go. So shout out to uh, SwitchPod if you are, I'm not going to say short, but I will say height deficient <laughs> like me, really small hands. At times, it just helps to have something uh, really small that can go on the side of my pouch for my water bottle or something like that, um, just when I'm on the go or, or whatever. So live streaming, vlogging setup, stuff like that is easy when you keep a simplified system. So the what I buy and what I even suggest you buy, think about how you plan to create. Now, what's a simple system of the stuff that you need? What's the best microphone in that scenario? What's the best uh, power options in that scenario? When I do my talk and I record it at people video, I'm not running off the battery. The battery is going to be gone in a short amount of time. And then I may miss certain parts that I want to pull for Q and a, when it comes to micro content. So what I'm going to do is hook it up to my battery bank that sits on the tripod. It's attached to the tripod. So now I don't have to worry about that. So th there are things that you buy or that should, you should buy just because it works well for a system of creation. Alrighty. So let's see here. Let's go over into the chats. All righty. Hook and I'm going to say bass because I'm thinking fishing. And, oh, okay. There's a fish in the thumb. Fantastic. Cause <laughs> I have a huge problem. Uh, when I stream on Twitch and stream labs, I use the Canon 70 D for my webcam, but it seems like it's lagging a little bit. Uh, should I get a new DSLR camera? So this Canon 70 D actually, uh, it's just a, a showstopper when it came out, a fantastic <laughs> content creation camera. It was one of those ones at the time I wish that I could have owned, but, but didn't have the money. And I was just like, dang it. <laughs> so <laughs> now what, what I always suggest is think about again, the links in the chain. Are you, first of all, let's go through our live streaming checklist. Are you first connected to ethernet? If you're doing Wi-Fi, you get a spanking because over here in these streets, you need to be using ethernet. Never Wi-Fi, always Ethernet. So that's the first thing. Now, are our Ethernet cables and all this stuff that we use and that is connected to our computer, are those good and fast? I mean, like really good and really fast. Our data cables that we're using to transfer data. That's why I said the, the cables need to not only be able to, if your camera can receive power, the 70D cannot because it doesn't charge internally. But it's, it's just if you're doing like USB or whatever, more than likely you probably are. Your cables can be the problem. It literally can be that simple. And a lot of times when I used to use like, for example, my Canon M50, it was a cable thing. Cable passed away and it's just going too slow. I said, let me test the theory. If you have a fire stick or a Roku or something like that, those transfer power as well as uh, data at a high speed rate, speed rate, took that cable, connected it and tested it, fixed everything right there. So that's something to think about, think about also. So I would do a test, test your cables, test your connectivities, and also whatever ports, if you're putting that into something like some kind of little hub deal that you may get on Amazon or whatever, it may not, it may be boasting one speed, but actually can't live up to what it's doing. That's why I use the cow digit when I'm in my, you know, studio setups and stuff like that. So that or better, 
when it comes to that, make sure you're going into a port that's that's helpful. Most of the time, though, um, if you're getting any kind of delays or anything like that, uh, really look into the cabling that you're using. Swap that out and see if that'll help you uh, first before you start trying to think like, oh, it's software or it's the audio or whatever. Then test. If you're using Ecamm Live, you should be able to adjust for a mic delay. So the different microphones, when you're going into your camera and stuff like that, may have, you know, a different delay that's needed. So, you know, just do a test uh, uh, when it comes to that. And that can really help with clearing things up uh, when it comes to that. So let's go over to another question that we have over here. Glenda's Creative Place. Good to see you, Glenda. Glad that you're here. My live streams with my VIP customers can sometimes be all day, eight hours sometimes. So what would I need? First of all, <laughs> congratulations, I guess. <laughs> That's quite a feat. Uh, what I would highly uh, suggest and recommend at that point is unlimited power. You're going to need an AC power adapter. Yes, there are third party options. I recommend getting the Sony one. Why? Because the ones that I have since 2019 have not failed. They've been dropped. They've been kicked. They've been whatever happens underneath on the airport uh, in your baggage when it's the, then they are not gentle. They can handle uh, different temperatures and stuff like that. You're traveling, going from an indoor cool situation to outdoors and it's now hot and all this extra other stuff they can handle and they, they've been able to take a beating. So if you're going to invest in a camera and this is, listen, by the time you're done getting memory cards, extra batteries, all the cables, you got the camera, maybe you throw on this $800 lens, you got another 30 something dollars built into for the mic. And yes, I'm using all the stuff from Rode, even the wind muff, but it's not a Rode microphone in here. I just like the Movo one. And then I took all the accessories from the Rode stuff. So I love you, Rode. We love you, sure. We love all these camera companies, I mean, audio companies, but <laughs> when it comes to the what I'm using, it's based on what I like, what works. That's an investment. So if I'm doing this for eight hours, you said, uh, what do you say, eight plus hours? I'm not going battery and I'm not going USB into the camera. I'm going straight AC. Your investments needs to match from not just the main uh, accessories and the main things that you need, but the associated accessories. All that stuff needs to, it needs to be comparable. So Sony AC adapters, sometimes you can find those used, uh, but they are just out of the box. Uh, check your local camera stores. You have companies like Adorama, BNH, Amazon, obviously, all that stuff. So check there uh, for a Sony branded one. It just is not worth it. I've had the unfortunate thing of getting these third party random brands on Amazon and it frying the camera. I mean, within seconds of taking it out of the box, put the dummy battery in the camera, these third party brands, some of these, turn it on, camera says goodbye. <laughs> And I'm like, wait, hold, wait, hold. No. Okay. At that point I was like, Hey, Canon, uh, I know you said don't do this, but he said, send this in for one. They was like, great. It'll be $276, please. Gosh, to what to, huh? And I'm like, were well, y'all paying for shipping? No, you can pay for shipping. Okay. Merry, Merry Christmas to you also. <laughs> so it just isn't worth it. Now you don't have the camera and you got to get it back. You need that. So AC adapter branded. Um, at that point, I would say if you got your lighting and stuff set up, make sure you have continuous lighting, not photography lighting. I used the Viltrox, uh, can't think of the name of them right now, but I used the Viltrox, uh, LED panels with the D fuse this is the letter D dash F U S E D fuse pop up soft box lights. Cause this is actually a small space. I don't want them taking up a whole bunch of space with the aperture 120 D's that are super huge. It just doesn't work in my space. It's too big for this small space. So I needed stuff that would be portable so I could take it down if I needed to, but, and travel. Uh, so those are collapsible. And then the led panels will fit into a laptop sleeve and I'll still have some space. So at that point, that's what I'm using, but you need unlimited battery power, like first and foremost, uh, that's going to be the thing. The lens that you use and stuff like that is going to be representative of to what look you want. I like the 35 millimeter F 1.8 lens by Sony. You also have the Sigma 30 millimeter F 1.4 or the Sigma 16 that I have here on my a 6,600. If you're going to be very, very close, but the most important thing in that kind of a setup for that long unlimited power options. And there's no other way I would go. I wouldn't do USB C power into the camera 
or none of that because I've done with the ZD ones, which is sitting over here. I've had, what was it? Four ZD ones. Cause it's what the client wanted to use. They had four ZD ones or, or three ZD ones. And I brought mine had four ZD ones. It's like, I want to use these. Okay. <laughs> Re record internally because that's possible on the Sony cameras. So we wanted to record it internally. So we have those files uh, and that was in 4k. We also have uh, where we live stream, but we used an AC power option. We went from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. No issues. And this is HDMI out, not no USB stuff, even though it can doesn't mean you should. So at that point, HDMI cam link for the capture cards, make sure your cables are comparable as far as the speed transfers and the like. So the most important thing um, is just don't shortchange on the small stuff. If you shortchange on the small stuff, you it, you'll, it'll eat into the what you're doing at the most inconvenient time. It sucks. It really, really sucks. Got another question. What's going on, Jerry? Good to see you. Glad that you're here. Does ZV10 get really hot when being used for live streaming? I have used mine for upwards and had it connected running for 11 hours, nonstop streaming. So does it get hot? I wouldn't know. I wasn't touching it, <laughs> but at that point, like, but when I did pick it back up, yes, it's warm, but not warmer than the a 64 or 6,600 when used in similar situations. The difference is if your, your camera is actually overheating or it's just warm from use. Now, again, hot, if it'd be one thing, if it's hot to where like, I'm concerned, I've never picked my camera up from long-term use, even after recording for an hour, uh, doing time lapses for an hour or streaming for 11 hours. When I picked the camera back up, I was not concerned about the heat on the, the camera or it being warm. Your phone does the same thing when you're talking for an hour or more, or you're watching videos for an hour or more, your computer everything, all these things, like it's a normal function for the equipment to get warm for it to get hot. Like at the point where I'm like, Ooh, that's concerning. No, but you may just not be experienced with it. And I, again, I don't, I don't know, but you may not be experienced with the, what, how warm it should be and how warm it shouldn't be. It's not going to be cool. Like how it is now air conditioned environment and all that different stuff. It's not going to feel like this when it's been running for 11 hours, nothing should. It's just normal course and function of, of the course of doing business. The Rodecaster Pro gets warm. So you just got to think about that when you're, when you're using it. Also, what all do you have running or doing at the same time or, or whatever? Uh, you know, most of the time, if I'm streaming, it's clean HDMI out. So I'm using a capture card and I'm using AC power. If I'm doing that, even when I've done USB uh, connected live streams, I've never picked it back up and whatever, because I've picked it up off the tripod and then I'll go and vlog with it. And it's been fine. So if you do have a defective model by some chance, go ahead and send that back immediately. So you're not getting frustrated, you know, with doing or, or the, what you're using and stuff like that. So just be careful uh, if it is actually overheating, but at some point it's supposed to be warm. It's in use. It's been running for hell. It's like, <laughs> it's okay uh, at that point. So that's the difference. Just know if it's actually getting hot or if it's just warm from use. So that's what I would say here. Um, quick question. I like this one. Uh, don't you, uh, don't you think the ZV one is actually better all around choice? Taking into account, account the rolling shutter jello, the jello on the ZV 10 effectively negates its actual movie camera. No, absolutely not. Um, if I had pulled the footage, which I just don't want to get across the lawyer Ecamps channel, but if I showed you footage from a channel called Becky and Chris, we did this when the ZV 10, uh, came out. And we covered so we could talk about that when it comes to the 4K. What you're seeing far as the rolling shutter is the scanning for it. The ZV-1 is no, it's not a better camera in that sense. Now, is it better in your specific use case? Potentially, because it depends on your use case. So what is better in that sense? Uh, as far as the use, you know, your mileage may vary. It's your personal preference. But as far as it being better simply because you're going to experience rolling shutter one on the ZV one, you have a smaller sensor, whereas on the ZV 10, you have a much larger sensor. And when it's scanning data from the bottom to the top and something is in motion and you're, you're like, so this is scanning it and something is still going, you'll have that slanted image or what have you. You have to think about how are you actually using your camera? Because here's the thing though, too, depending on the work that you may be doing, do you need to make a larger investment into something 
that maybe doesn't have that. So if that's required for your work, we need to now go into a different conversation around higher tier cameras for the kind of work that you're doing. If not, then no, it's not an issue. Because if I'm switching from the camera like this and then I turn it around, do you really care that the tree got slanted for a millisecond? No, because you weren't looking at it. So there are some things that I think when it comes to the specifications, especially like when we watch stuff on YouTube, every little thing gets pointed out like, oh, it's a problem. Look at this. But for an actual creator, when you're actually creating, there is zero people that have ever, and I own the A6400, that's the same. A6600, that's the same. And now the ZVE10, that's the same. I've done projects for a lot of channels that some of you all love to watch. Was it a problem? No. And we were doing 4K constantly. Was it a problem? No. So if the what you're doing is a, if that's an issue, again, we may need to look at a higher tier camera, but no, it's, it's not a problem. And like ZV1 being better because one has it at a smaller sensor, mm -mm. lens options. So it sets this camera apart because now this comes a content creation machine instead of only stuck at the 24 to 70 millimeter on the, now the Zeiss lens on here is nothing, nothing to, to be shy about. It's a good lens, don't get me wrong. Lens options, larger sensor and a 6K image it's a 6K sensor where it's squeezed, or I like to say squares. <laughs> it's squeezed down into, it's 6K, squeezed into 4K. You want to see what that looks like in true application and use case, even on the A6400 that didn't have any kind of stabilization at all? Go look up a channel called Becky and Chris and their series called, uh, um, what is it? Something, Cold Island. Cold Island. They shot on the A7S Mark II and the Sony A6400. Both of those have rolling shutter issues. Not one person in the comments said anything about it. Number two, nor is it really visible. Also in software, you have corrections and stuff like that. It was only one shot that I ever got with the A6400 in use where a door was opening because it's not anything where I'm whipping back and forth with the camera, but the door is opening. And I'm like, okay, that is a little too slanted in software, whether you're using Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 10, in my use case, it was a dope, uh, a Final Cut Pro 10. There's a rolling shutter uh, adjustment feature in there. Turned it on, door straightens out. So it's like for what we see on YouTube and stuff like that, you really have to be careful about making decisions based on things that are mentioned, like, yeah, know about it, just in case you're doing something in that scenario. There's zero things that I've ever done where that's been a problem. Even for when I was doing client work, it's never been a problem. So an actual true use case since owning Sony cameras that have that problem since 2019, it's never been a problem. So uh, that's my thing when it when it comes to that. Alrighty, great questions you guys are having here. It's like, whoo. <laughs> so your tech coach, do you use a cage on your ZV-E10? If so, what are the benefits of using one? So I'm waiting for one to come in the mail and so uh, I will, I'll reserve my comments until I have tested both. I prefer not a full body cage. Um, it's okay, but, and, and so small rig, they do have a, a full body cage that is, if not available for pre-order, should be available for order. But when you put on here, I don't like a full cage. I have one, but I don't need one because again, now it's adding extra weight for what? What I do like is what I have on the ZV-1 which you'll see here at the bottom, which is called a partial cage. I get uh, an additional cold shoe right here. This is my Ulanzi quick claw release plate. And then I have the battery door that's able to completely come out just so I have the extra stuff. Should I need it, need it, but it's not taking up any, uh, anything additional really when it comes to the, the, what I'm doing. So, I prefer partial cages or just a bottom base plate instead of something that's like, I don't know, like, you know, like a full thing. Cause it's just adding weight. I don't, unless I plan to rig my camera up and depending on the, what I'm doing, maybe then a cage is useful, but just in general, like the benefits of using one, you get a bunch of little holes that you can connect and rig a bunch of stuff up. You also are adding additional weight. If you need to use an additional monitor handle, all this extra other stuff, then great. Cages are fantastic for that. And, and like I said, I have one that fits my A6400 when I needed it. When I don't need it, the cage is off. 
So it's a great tool. It's not one that I leave on my camera. The only thing that I probably maybe will leave on here is when I get the bottom base plate um, that's available, then that'll be on there because it's not any additional weight and for the, the benefits that it provides. But honestly, I'd prefer to run without uh, just because, uh, and it can add a little bit of protection and stuff depending on, you know, if you drop your camera, hopefully not. <laughs> so that's the thing uh, when you're talking about that. Uh, let's see here. All right. Question after question after question is coming in. Y'all are cranking it. Uh, saying rolling shutter is a feature. Well, <laughs> it's not necessarily this, as I say, a feature. It's a, uh, it's just a cost of, is the cost of, cost of doing business uh, at an APS-C center, at least for Sony's and stuff like that. So every camera has it to some extent. And it's really just some of the more recent ones that came out where it's an actual thing that's been resolved, but it's something to, to deal with. You know, it's not, it's not that big of an issue. Uh, Doc over here adding in some additional details as far as heating. Saying 49 Celsius, 120 degrees Fahrenheit is the quote unquote safe max temperature for human contact established by several regulating agencies around the world. And there you go. <laughs> uh, what is going on? Michael Jackson fan made. Good to see you. Glad that you are here. Um, uh, so it's been super helpful. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Glad to be of assistance. Um, Let's see here. What is going on? Brendan Sparks. Good to see you. Glad that you are here. All righty. So, and hot is kind of relative. Uh, we consider the sun hot, but it's <laughs> not for the sun. It, it just depends. You know, again, sometimes we have to be careful about what we borrow from the stuff that we see on videos. We can say hot, but it may actually just be warm. What is it hot compared to? when we talk about cameras actually overheating, which is something Sony actually had to deal with, which is actually a problem. The a 6300, 6500, I believe overheated before they had did the firmware updates. It was a problem. So, you know, that's the thing that we really need to think about. What are we borrowing from other videos? And we're just repeating that as gospel instead of just really think about like, is this actually a problem? If my camera actually got hot, I would be here telling y'all about that. The only things I have a problem with automatic white balance lock isn't there. And the auto uh, exposure sometimes can adjust too rapidly as you're moving about, but you have the auto exposure lock, which tends to be super helpful uh, with the, what you're doing. Alrighty. Um, Another question coming in here. Let's grab this, bring it on over. Alrighty. So what's the one thing you wish they'd done differently with the Sony ZV-E10? Hmm. That's a great question. What do I wish they had done differently? If I was to say something, I wish that that would be changed. I do wish we had the new Sony menu systems and here's why. It's not now because I own all the other ones, I don't feel anything different. It's actually of a comfort to just know exactly the, what I'm looking for and how to use it because it's no different than the a 6,400, my ZV one and the a 6,600, which can lead into more or less, I believe the decision why they know that you're more uh, likely to make a purchase laterally of something that's around a similar price range, or even if you upgrade to the a 6,600, there's no difference in the menu system. However, based on, and I think that's based on a price tier factor. Now, when you move into something like an a seven S three, Sony, a one Sony, a nine Mark two, a seven R Mark four type territory. Uh, well, that's one's a little bit older, but you look at some of these newer cameras, a nine Mark two excluded. It has the newer uh, menu systems only because I don't remember if the Mark two a nine Mark two has it, but a one uh, a seven S Mark three has the newer Sony menu systems. Now, if you wanted to make that jump from one to the other, I wish that there was the newer system so that you're already comfortable with learning that. But again, I think from a price tier point, they know from about 600 to $1,300 that stuff needs to have the same menu system so that when you move around, you're comfortable 
you're not having to think about the menus. That's one thing I wish just because I can foresee myself going to that higher price tier and so forth and stuff like that. The other thing I, I, I think needs to come in a firmware update is auto, uh, auto white balance lock like the A6600 has. Uh, it should have it. It should. The fact that it doesn't is is no reason for it, to be honest with you. It's not a price thing. It's not a it's just something like if we have log profiles uh, so that you can actually, you know, get learning and color grading and all that different stuff. If we have all that, this should have been fixed. Now, I'm not complaining too much because those are very small gripes <laughs> with a headphone port, digital stabilization, USB-C. Sony one, one mount, the E mount system, which I adore because I can use any lens across any of the, any things and it'll work. So I'm very pleased with the, the, the setup and stuff like that. Um, touch screen, Sony, maybe we'll see you next lifetime out here in these streets. I would love to see it because if you ever look and review a photo or a video on your camera, your Sony ZV-E10, you can pinch and zoom around to go into certain things. Try it out if you have your camera. This lets you know that the touch capabilities are simply turned off. Turn them on, <laughs> please. And I think it would be great, similar to other brands like Panasonic, like um, Canon, especially, especially when you're thinking about the user base of the who is buying this camera. Your phone is air like, Remember if you were, depending on your age, you're stressed out about going from the QWERTY keyboards to the, the fully, like there's no buttons or there's only one. It's like, what are you doing to us? We need to bring, bring back the Blackberry scroll wheel, bring back the, I need oh, my, my full keyboard. Now we don't have any of that full touchscreen. So you have a whole generation that's learned nothing but a full touchscreen. When they finally now iPhone 13 gang, where you at uh, iPhone 13 comes out, Samsung and all the rest, Google pixel six and all those great ones come out all touch Sony. You have to navigate manually, make it easy for people to make the transition. So for the, who the target audience is, I think them seeing something and wanting to change it would be more helpful and then let them lock the screen if that's what they want to do. So that it's like, if you want to, it touch enable your screen. Great. You can do that. If you want to turn this feature off so that you only use the dial. So you don't make any accidents. If you actually touch the screen. Cool. Those are the few things that I wish just because of the, who, uh, the target audience is, uh, when it comes to that. So <laughs> that's, that's what I, I would highly, uh, wish was in the camera. Um, a hundred percent. I just wish it was there. I wish it was there. All righty. Let's take a look at some other questiones. Hope you guys are getting some joy out of the stream. If you are, smash that like button. You know you want to show some love. LSP crew, uh, good to see you. Glad that you're here. Ecamm Live crew, good to see you. Glad that you are here. All right. Um, let's go over and answer some questions. Uh, all righty. Dean Reynolds, <laughs> good to see you. Glad that you are here saying, Diana, why are you so good at what you do? You're everywhere. Well, first of all, I'm honored. Thank you. Um, I will definitely say it is an honor and a pleasure to be on the stages uh, that I am at. I don't feel like anything has like been given in that sense. I feel like it's definitely like you work for it. <laughs> so um, uh, I, I would definitely say, though, some of the things when it comes to being comfortable on camera, simply comes from embracing the discomfort initially of being on camera. Most of you all, if you were at the leap into live streaming event, you heard me uh, share and open up about being an introvert, like a real, like secluded person. Like I was telling doc, <laughs> I'm like, stop telling people I was a city I live in too. I'm like, I'm not trying to go hang with people when they come to town all the time. Like I'm, I'm so serious. Like, Hey, I'm going to be intense. Like, okay, Merry Christmas. I'm <laughs> like, I, I, for real, like I have to get pumped up to go out and it's just like, you know, obviously pre 2020 issues and whatnot, but it's like, okay, like I need, I need to do that on my own a little bit more, but that's extroversion. 
is a muscle that has to be built over time but you can't just wait for that muscle to be built you got to set a schedule to go build that muscle so in doing the live streams people are like i never would have guessed that you just like yeah it's like so if you see me at people video that's a muscle like to be around that many people that's been developed over time and to still be able to be myself not you know crash or have any kind of anxiety issues and whatnot but i also know the limit and then it's like okay at some point you'll see me disappear and I will be back probably in my room or something like catching my breath and just recharging myself a little bit and then ready to do it again. So uh, I, I would definitely say that the how you get good at what you're doing is initially embracing the discomfort of not being comfortable initially and keep embracing that next new level. Keep embracing the next thing, thing that you want to do. Set a goal of something that makes you uncomfortable. And then show up to do it. You don't have to, I'm getting ready. I'm building up my courage. There's no such thing as the building up your courage. There is a punch that courage in the throat and then just show up. <laughs> That's what I believe. You just have to do it. There's discomfort in everything. But when you wanted to have your children and build a family, you embrace the discomfort of not knowing what the heck you were really going to do. You had some ideas, but you really didn't know until you got into it. You wanted to start learning to drive a car. You didn't care about how many accidents per year or whatever the heck was going on or highway um, traffic and construction. You don't think about that. What's my goal now? What's the shortest path to achieving that goal? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So think about that. Like, so live streaming and stuff and video, no different. Uh, introverts, you're in good company. You can do it. It's about building a muscle, but I've also been streaming four or five years consistently when it sucked, when nobody was there. When two people came, I remember the first time when the one person showed up, I was like, is this real? Cause I'm like, are you saying stuff? What are you saying? Okay. Welcome. By the time I left, I was drenched in sweat cause I was super nervous. And I set a goal when I get off and I do something, uh, for those of you, just so you, you have a, a flight path, if you will, when I do something that's uncomfortable for me or something that's a first time for me, I'll reevaluate as soon as I'm done, because sometimes your feelings can be false. Most of the times your feelings are false and it's a lie to make you make a decision based off feelings. I never want to base a, de a decision, especially something for my business or me growing as a person or a creator, all the above. I don't want to base that off my feelings because my feelings can be false. And oftentimes they are. What I will do is evaluate what went well and what do I want to go better the next time based on that? Now I'm going to say, you know what? Okay. What did I like? And what was great? What did I not like? And what could have been better and why? And not just complain about it, but set up a system for the next time. The next time I do something like this, I want to do X or I really would feel better if X, because that will resolve the problem. Now, schedule to do that again within two weeks time frame, if you can, and repeat that again. Don't wait because now you are getting into extreme discomfort the longer you wait. Do it again within a week or two weeks time frame, whatever your schedule permits. And don't push it out just because. Now, test your efficiency in the systems that you just built. How did it go? What did you like and what could have done better? I repeat that process over and over and over again, no matter what it is that I'm doing. So I say the next time that I do this, this is the system I'm going to implement. I'm going to test it and keep doing and repeating the process. Uh, so that's, that's, I, I would highly encourage for, for that um, there. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that helps. All righty. So let me quickly take a look, see, uh, and that's good teaching. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thanks so much, Al Jennings. Good to see you. Uh, glad that you uh, are here saying I am an unbalanced ambivert. That's what I'm talking about. It's it's just about, again, I don't take the introverted extroversion stuff as gospel of the how I am. I take it as knowledge of the how I have been and what are some things that I could do. It's always about coming to at least the center ground somewhere. I'm not trying to be too far one way, too far the other. I want to get as close as possible. So even if that's, you know, you start way over here, start making the steps to get gradually back. And that's also having good mentors and coaches around you, good communities around you. If you're not part of that Ecamm Live community, make sure you do so. And so that's something that can be super helpful for you um, just in, you know, doing that. So I, th I think that's super helpful. 
uh, saying live streaming pros love this channel. That's what we're talking about. Information man show. Good to see you. Glad that you're here. Uh, saying such great advice. Thank you so much. Uh, all righty. Let's answer some of our final questions here. Um, all righty. Let's answer this one. One second pause for the calls. All right. So crazy crafter, you had a question. What lens would you recommend for the ZVE 10 for a live streamer? So I don't necessarily just do like blind recommendations or just because recommendations, I would highly say, think about how close you want to be to your camera. What look do you want? If you, and especially the space that you're recording in or live streaming in, if you have a small space, you don't really want to touch a 30 or 35 millimeter focal length. Now I'm not going to get into the weeds of the, the what means what and blah, blah, blah. However, what I will say is if you plan to be close and you want your camera close within an arm's distance to be able to change stuff and whatnot, or it's going to be sitting like right in front of you, more than likely the lens that may be best in that scenario is the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4 lens, because what people often want is a blurry background. In order to do that, you need to have that aperture or that number that starts with an F at the front of the lens needs to say F 2.0 or be lower than that number F 2.0 or lower. So this lens here is an F 1.8. So you notice that the background has some blur to it. Now you also want to think if you don't have any of these lenses and you're not sure, this is why you want to get a kit lens with your camera. Set your camera on the tripod where you plan to do your thing and see and adjust the lens. What do you like that's in the shot? Let's say right over here on the side of the bookshelf, let's say you're doing this in your bedroom or something, is a whole load of laundry that's unfolded, a bunch of towels, but you don't want that in the shot. And that basket, your kids always put stuff there, blah, blah, blah. Cool. What needs to be in the shot for that to be cut out? So zoom in your lens. And see, you may see that a 20 millimeter or something like a 20 millimeter would be great. Your camera also has the ability, the Sony ZV-10, as well as the A64, 6600, and ZV-1 even, has what's called clear image zoom. Clear image zoom works best when you have what's called a prime lens, that one focal length, that's 16 millimeters, like the Sigma 16 lens. So you can do that crop in like you saw to keep coming in and crop in on the sensor to get exactly what you need. That 35 millimeter didn't move. I'm using a remote. So you can get a Bluetooth remote if you need to for the, the camera, but you don't need to more than likely if you're that close, but you can use a clear zoom and you can say, okay, that's kind of close. Yep. Mm, almost or oh, back it up right there. That's what I want. And you can use that if you, if you want to. So you have access to use the clear image zoom, which is the feature that you just saw. So if it's 20 millimeters, it's a sweet spot for where you are. 16, at least that Sigma 16 would probably be the best lens for you for the highest quality because it's going to sit on the tripod. So if you find that that is a different focal length, go look for the focal length, the lens that matches that focal length and then buy accordingly. Uh, that's what, what I highly recommend. So, um, let's see here. Alrighty. Uh, we have one question. We're going to make this one a good one. Frank the tank. <laughs> I love that name. Frank the tank. Good to see you. Glad that you're here. Have you guys tried using the ZVE 10 for product pictures? Uh, I would like to know the settings for that. That's a great question. So most of the photography use, um, or photo based use, I don't even want to say photography cause that makes it sound too, <laughs> too much. But, uh, if you take a look, um, at some of the images that I've done, even like on my channel or whatever, those are taken with the same similar cameras for that. The ZVE 10 has, it just depends on the, what I need to take a picture of and then what's possible. And I pick a lens. So if you look at any of the thumbnails, those are taken with the same capabilities that the ZVE 10 has, you can get that blurry background, really sharp quality and, and so forth. So, um, let's go here and then we're going to wrap this up and land the plane. <laughs> Cause it can be a bit much. So we're not going to go over. Um, alrighty. So let's see here. Uh Oh, pause for the cause. I'm just trying to go over to the channel because I just want to show you the thumbnails of what's possible for with what, with the, what you are doing. 
Um, so this one here, you take a look at this thumbnail. Uh oh, let me zoom this out from when we were showing the other stuff. All right. So you take a look at the best ZVE 10 for versus the A6400 for video. Um, because I'm holding that camera, I took that with the A6600. Same capabilities and stuff as possible. There are some other videos. Actually, you know what? Let me go through the what's on the home tab. No, don't play a video. And then pause for the cause on the trailer. Alrighty. So if you scroll down, let's go over to some of the recent ones. Those are also taken. Uh, other uh, thumbnails and stuff like that with the existing cameras of the what's possible. Let me go down here to, here we go. This is one did on the video settings. That one is taken with the, um, I think I used the A, yeah, I had the A6400 out. Same sensor, same capabilities, literally the exact same thing, just a different model number. So that's taken with that. Um, any of these other thumbnail stuff like this, it, it's the exact same thing. The, the biggest thing that you're going to deal with uh, when it comes to that, is going to be uh, the lens that you use and the lighting. The photo capabilities, you're not crippled one bit. Sincerely, it's not like promotion or whatever, but you sincerely uh, are not crippled when it comes to the the what's possible uh, for the what you are doing. So I hope you all get some some value out of uh, value out of that. Let me speak English. All righty. So uno momento, por favor. I am looking for something. And I cannot locate it. Alrighty, so one last thing here before we wrap up today. Hope you guys, if you guys are getting value out of it, make sure you hit the like button, show some love to the LSP community and fam, as well as the Ecamm Live community. So thanks and shout outs to them for today and sponsoring today's stream brought to you by ecamm live if you don't have ecamm live make sure you click on the links in the description to get your uh free access to those um let's see here i was looking for something and now i can't find it <laughs> i wanted to share with you all something but it's gonna have to wait so oh well yeah just can't seem to locate it this is part of being live it, it does what it does Alrighty. Hmm. Oh, well, we'll go to one, one last comment then can't find what I was looking for, but yeah, photos and stuff like that. It's great. Um, when it comes to those, you, you just aren't getting, you know, cut or whatever. So thank you. Just miss D my pleasure. Good. Glad to be of service and man, she's good. Thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate that. Um, what camera am I streaming with right now? And why I use the Sony a 6,400 and the Sony 35 millimeter F 1.8 lens so that I can get the blurry background. It's recessed a little bit into right at the door of my closet. Uh, this is a small office space. So it's about four feet away. Also, uh, the F 1.8 on that lens, that number means that I get a blurry background, but it's also good in these indoor low light situations. So if I want to be bright, I can, if I only want to light my face and have the background dark, I can, and you don't see, a bunch of sprinkles and dots and stuff like that, that digital noise in the shot. So it doesn't produce any issues. Why I use the Sony a6400? It was my first Sony camera and I had this since 2019. So um, now using other cameras, every camera has a designated purpose. So I never have to take this camera off the tripod unless I'm doing a tutorial with it or a comparison, but it's number one function and main job now is the go-to live streaming camera. So it doesn't have to move. The settings don't change. And that helps when it comes to having a consistent look. Now, if you don't have a camera that allows you to have, uh, or if you don't got one, let's just say you only got one camera, you can use what's called memory recall in your camera. If you click on the button at the top, it'll say M R. And so that M R you'll see the different numbers. You can save every last one of your settings ISO, white balance, everything so that it locks it. Let's say number one is your live streaming setup. So you can save that stuff. Let's say you use something different when you're vlogging, maybe a whole other different lens. Memory recall number two, MR2 in your camera, save every last detail and thing that you use when it comes for that. So that's something fantastic that you can take uh, and use uh, for it yourself so that you don't have to worry about. So if it's going from tripod to use, then you can do that. But me, um, as a video 
marketing strategist, a video educator. I have different cameras so that I can teach from them and stuff like that. However, we're coming to the close. So if you want to find out more about the Sony ZV-E10, you can take a look at the different playlists that are available when it comes to the stream. I hope y'all had a fantastic day. I did too. Let's rock out a little bit. I hope y'all had a fantastic day. We've had a lot of questions that we were able to answer. A lot of things that we were able to dive into on today's stream. I hope you got a lot of value out of it. I hope that if you have any questions, you leave those in the comments. I'll be checking the comments afterwards. Let's give some love and support over to Laureate at LSP for live streaming pros. Throw some emojis in the chat. How do you feel right now? Are you ready to conquer your live streaming and video needs? Are you ready? Are you ready to get your first camera? Are you ready to conquer your first live stream? Don't let anything hold you back. Don't let anything stop you from sharing your message using video. I have had a fantastic pleasure and honor to be your host for Luria. Make sure you come back next Monday, check out and subscribe for more things here at Ecamm Live as well as live streaming pros. But with that guys, live with passion. I'll see you on the next video somewhere on the interwebs.